Well, it was a good day for the Pirates off the field and on the field. They end this miserable road trip on a good note with the win against Arizona. And Jeff, uh, where did the Pirates go from here? Uh, they got young guys still in the minors. If it's me, I'm bringing up Quinn Priester and starting him one of those three games, the first series back against the Giants. I want to see the young guys come up now because I, I think their playoff hopes are Done. Well, they're no longer in a division race, so you can wipe that off the board. Now it's a matter of who can, what do you, can you get for Rich Hill, what can you get for Carlos Santana. G-Man Choi, it's about five or six more home runs. Maybe he, he drives up some interest for him. I think that's the first step. And then you play these young guys and you give them some more experience. You know, let Davis play right field or maybe even catch a little uh, bit. How yeah, about please that? let him catch. How about just catch. having him catch? Trade Austin like Hedges. Once or twice. <laughs> well, that should be up easy here trade. and get Priester <laughs> So up many here. teams value that. They say that pitch framing means so much. He's the best in the sport. He's on an expiring contract. <laughs> and Priester's got to get up here. I mean, he has look to. at their rotation. I mean, after the break, you would think he's up. And their rotation, yeah, at some point, even if he's not, you know, popping in the minors and AAA like we, we hoped and people thought that the Pirates fans that he would. You just need bodies at this point. You need your best AAA starter because your rotation is in such shambles right now. The, the Contreras and Ortiz thing, man, I mean, of all things have happened this calendar year for the Pirates, and, and you know, there's been some good things, and whatever it is, those two guys were supposed to be, you know, the, uh, whatever which color was supposed to be, and when it, maybe that, this offseason, Keller was ascending maybe to what people thought he would be, but but those two were supposed to be cornerstones of rotation for years to come, and it's been really disappointing. I don't either, for different reasons, they're both kind of just, I don't know how you, you know, the reclamation of that right now. The only thing about Contreras that you hold on to hope wise as well, this is what Keller went through, that he had uh, struggled mightily in the major leagues and then figure it out. And now he's headed to the all star game. But I don't want to wait three years yeah. for Contreras to have the light bulb right. go off. OK, like when, when last year ended, it wasn't on my mind like, oh, he's going to have to go through immense growing pains to be a top end starter or even a competent major league starter. I thought he was going to be really good right now. And the fact that his velocity is so low and the bullpen experiment didn't work, I mean, that, to Chris's point, that's the biggest issue I think the Pirates are dealing with. Great, they've drafted Paul Skeens, but where are the guys like Contreras and Ortiz are supposed to be mainstays in their rotation for the next few years? Yeah, and the good thing is they're 23 and 24. So it's not like they're 27, 28, and they're just finding the majors. Like, these are young guys. And it looked like if you watch them, it seemed like they were aiming a lot of their pitches. Maybe they can get back down there and just yeah, start that's the bigger again. problem for me. Like, what's Pitch the framing? What's the stupid Austin Tomlin Hedges. thing? I'd rather say <laughs> whoa than or what's the sick or whoa thing? Yeah. It's, uh, uh, it, Shelton almost got to say sick to these guys. <laughs> they're, days they're, they're, they're soft tossing right now. What ha I'd rather have wild power and try to harness it than these guys that but are trying to throw darts. Those Jeff. guys is what they're being told. Like, hey, don't throw. If, if you're being told. Don't throw balls. It's like, don't throw picks. Well, knock it you're off. Gonna, yeah. you're gonna be Many people inside the organization told me they thought uh, Contreras was going to be their number one guy this year. Uh, and now he's back in the minors. I, obviously, it was a failure this year. But just like you said, Keller uh, went through similar things. Now, speaking of disappointments, I want to get into Brian Hayes, uh, Pony. I mean, back on the injury list, did they make the right move signing this guy? Because it seems to be something that happens every year with him. Uh, did they make the right decision signing him? No, I guess. I mean, he's. I mean, it's a it's a team friendly deal though too. I mean, but are right, we going to so have I mean, to deal with this guy? Is this like a Tristan uh, Jari yeah, situation so, where he gets injured every year? So look, I mean, the dilemma with the Pirates is anytime they give a player money, I feel bad after the fact ripping them for it because it's so few and right. far between. Brian Reynolds has not played like a hundred million dollar player. But I'm still happy that they showed the, the, the initiative to give somebody a long-term deal yeah. like that. No, Hayes should be a guy that hits more than six home runs a season or seven home runs and hits 250. I thought he was going to have more offensive prowess to go with the great defense. He overall, to me, has been a disappointing player in his major Maybe league Maybe the career. better way Outside of the COVID year. Word this question, did they misevaluate him? Well... Let's evaluate him after he's fully healthy. I mean, he's twice. He might can never he get, get fully healthy? I know, I know, but let's, I'll go with what Charrington said, is that it is not a long-term issue, that this is a short-term issue that he's dealing with. He doesn't need surgery. This is something they're just trying to figure out you how best that? to the do. You buy that? The guy spends one day off the I.L. and has to go right back on. That doesn't sound like and, it's and a minor thing. And they said they're just being, they're just being cautious because they had the All-Star break coming. This is Charrington talking. This is one of but I will say this, if you have a lower back issue and you've got, and apparently it stems from some issues that he's had in his hips, and you think about swinging 
and that rotation, you're not going to get any power. If you don't, yeah. if you feel tightness or you're not, you know, willing to go full out with your swing because of that lower back, you're going to hit singles. You're not going to hit for the same amount of power. If they're able to fix that, obviously defensively he can play, and I'll give him the benefit of the doubt that some of that power will eventually come. The thing that was sort of, you know, made, my, made you sort of curious about that contract extension was essentially it was the same offer the Pirates had made the previous spring. And that was when he hit, he looked like the, the best hitter in baseball, and there were that four, month, four weeks he was up the September before. And his value was up to here, and he didn't want it. Then a year later, after injuries, after hitting whatever home runs he hit, didn't show much power as a hitter, and so then he accepted that contract. Now, was that sort of alarming? Was that foretelling? I don't know what that was at that point, but it, you know, it's, it's interesting how that played out, and it, you know, how much different do you feel if they if he signed it the year before? Definitely so. something to, to think about, Chris, no doubt about that. And I want you guys to think about something. Who is the most important person on the Steelers offense? Well, we're going to talk about that coming up next. Stay right there.